guys, it's Steph here with Crafty Ladybug. Today we're going to talk about a couple items that are in our beach series and we're going to begin the beach series with the beach chair. This is going to be the first item that I'm releasing in the beach series. It is a beach chair that we're going to make on one loom and I've got the matching dad that's going to go with it perfectly. So here's our beach bob. And Bob has got hair on the back of his head, as well as cute little pair of swimming trunks. His daughter, Beach Bree. We've got a littler version of our mom. And this is going to be, once again, hair on the back of their head. The hair is something that I started on the back of the head with Prince Eric and Ariel. So if you want to see other items with the hair, different styles of hair, check those out. But our Brie has got her little beach pail as well as her rake and her shovel. So that's going to be on my channel very soon. The beach umbrella to coordinate with the whole entire beach theme. And here we have got our beach mama, little Barbie, beach Barbie, and her beach mat. And then boogie board Billy over here on his little mini boogie board and once again Billy has got hair on the back of his head as well as a cute pair of little shorts but these are going to be some great items that you would love to complete to finish off your beach okay, series. So let's get started with this beach chair. This is Steph with Crafty Ladybug and today's lesson is going to be on the large version of the beach chair. For today's beach chair you're going to be needing about 150 bands to complete the sides of the chair Today I will be using Rainbow Looms Gray, just because I want my chair to have silver rails on this um, demonstration. The center of the chair needs to be made with the same type of rubber bands. So if you wanna use yellow and red, make sure that you're just choosing the same brand of rubber bands. If you're using Rainbow Loom Yellow, use Rainbow Loom Red. If you're using DIY Yellow, please use DIY Red because the difference in the bands will make a difference as to how this little chair turns out in the center, the little blanket part of the chair. So for that area, I'm using pink and I'm using a bluish kind of green. So that's going to be my center area. We're going to begin today's lesson doing the inside portion of the chair. And for this, we're going to be using a technique that Kate from Izzylicious Designs um, came up with called moving it forward. So we're changing our regular loom from three pegs. We're going to change it over to five pegs and I will show you how to do that as we go along. Also for the chair we're going to be needing three toothpicks. One, two, and the bottom one, three, will be covered up with a few rubber bands. So be sure to have three toothpicks right handy with you also. All right guys, let's begin. So to begin today's lesson, I'm going to start off up here at the top. And for the top, I'm going to be taking a single pink band and I'm going to lay it from right peg one to center peg. And our loom is set up straight this time. So you wanna make sure that your loom is set straight. Take another rubber band and place it from center over to left. That is a single rubber band, one rubber band. Next thing we're going to do is to come down our right peg and we're just going to form a single chain all the way down this left peg. I'm sorry, this is my left side. I don't know my left from my right today. But we're just going to do a single chain all the way down that left side. And once we get to the bottom, we're going to stop and we're going to start on our next side. All I'm doing is just taking a single band and running it all the way down to the bottom of the loom. Now that I am at the bottom of this loom, I do want to cap off that band right there. And you want to do it with a three time cap band. I take one band, wrap it around my hook to make it look like three bands, and then I'm just placing it over that bottom peg. Some of you may need to pick up your loom and wrap your bands around that peg, but you want it to be a three time cat band. I'm going to move back up here to the top and I'm going to change my color. And I'm just doing basic simple chain right down the loom again. 
and this is in my second color that I've chosen to use for today. Nothing too exciting about this, just laying one single band all the way down the loom until we get to the bottom. And then once again, it's going to be capped off with a single band wrap three times. So right down here at the bottom, I'm going to take and I'm going to cap it off two and three with a single band wrapped around my hook three times and then placed over that peg. I'm going to come back up here to the top again and we're going to alternate back to our pink color. And we're just, as I said, single chain all the way down the loom. Nothing too difficult about this step. Once we get to the bottom of the loom, we're going to cap it off with a ding, 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 three time cap band. So we're just gonna keep working our way down the loom. Now I've reached the base again, and I'm going to do a three time cap band at the bottom of the loom. I can get it to stay on my hook today. I have butter fingers today. All right, our next step is going to be to lay the horizontal bands in this area. So for the horizontal bands, you want to take your center color, whatever color you have here in the center of your loom, and that's gonna be the color that you wanna use for your horizontal bands. And you're just gonna take and you're going to run a single band all the way across your loom over those three pegs, right in a row. If you've ever made a triple single chain, that's pretty much what we're doing here. Until we get to the next step where we have to move our pegs. And that's a lot of fun. Okay. I have not done the very last peg because we have our cap bands on that peg, so I don't really need to do that set of pegs. Now for today's lesson, we're going to be leaving this set of pegs unloomed because when I do the next two rows, when I move my loom over two rows, I need to hook up our horizontal bands onto this peg. So what I want you to do is to reach into your leftmost peg at the bottom, reach into your cap band, grab that single band, and loop forward. We're going to loop up the left, and we're going to loop up the center, and we're going to leave the right on the loom. So we're just going to reach in, pushing back our horizontal band, that blue color band, and just loom straight forward. Nothing too difficult about this. Just pushing back your cap band or your horizontal band as some people call them. I call them both actually in this area. Sometimes I say cap, sometimes I say horizontal. But we're just looping straight forward right up to the top. And then I'm going to leave that band alone for a second because I want to catch this one into it. So I'm going to reach down here to the bottom again, and I'm working on the center. If you're following along with me, my colors, you're going to be doing the blue. Once again, we're just pushing back that horizontal band and looping straight forward. Not too difficult to do this portion. And once we get up to the top, we are going to be stopping at the very top. And at the very top here, you're going to reach over to your left peg and you're gonna reach in to that left peg and you're gonna grab that band at the top and carry it over to the center. Next, we're going to reach into our center peg, pushing through everything there, grabbing that band on the bottom which is moving over towards the right and move it over to the right peg. Now we need to stop and we need to take our loom apart 
and we need to do our transfer. I'm going to go very slowly on this next portion so everyone can follow along with me. Please get your rainbow loom hook handy, your true rainbow loom hook, and I will be right back with you to show you the transfer and what we're going to do next. All right guys, I've got my rainbow loom hook, and what you wanna do is to pick up your loom and you want to take off the pegs on the back. Pop up the, the small pegs. You wanna take off the small peg connectors. Just pop those off. And what we're going to do next is a little tricky. Take your peg connector and you wanna take the first row here and you wanna place it on your rightmost pegs at the top. Just snap those in at the bottom there, push up on them, so you only want it to be connected on this first row. We need to do the same thing down at the bottom, so that it's only connected on that very first row here, the rightmost row. Our next step is to take what we've already loomed on these two columns off and gently slide them down beside the row that we have not loomed. So you just want to reach in and gently release those bands. Being very careful not to let any of the bands slip off on that rightmost row. If they do, it's not a problem. You shouldn't have a problem placing the horizontal bands back down. But we just need to free up these first two rows so we can move them over. And all I'm simply doing is just pulling up and releasing those rows. Now that they're all released, just push down slightly on what you currently have on your loom. And you're going to take this first row, the leftmost row, pop it up, and you're going to move it over A row to the open pegs here. We're going to take what was our center row, we're going to pop it up, and we're going to move it over. A row. So here we have the pink is row number one, the blue is row number two, this set of pink right here is row number three. We're going to do a row of blue which will be number four, and a row of pink, which will be row number five. Next steps are very simple as to what we started with. We're going to be taking a single pink band. We're going to place it on our loom from right to center. And this part is going to be just a little bit trickier. You need to lift up what is now your rightmost peg, I'm sorry, your leftmost peg. I will get my left and right straight today, I promise. You wanna take your hook, reach in there and lift that up, and you wanna place your band from the center over to the right, left, left, and then we want to place this back down on that peg, and that's going to be what helps us secure those bands over when we go to move them. All right, now I'm ready to begin to lay my blue bands, and then on this side will be my pink bands. Very easy, once again, we're just laying our single chain all the way down the loom. Nothing too difficult about one band going all the way down the loom. Sometimes this is where the elevator music would come in and work perfectly because this is the boring spot of the job. I've reached the bottom and I need to cap that off with a three time cap band. Number one, number two, and number three. If you guys are doing this advanced tutorial, you should know how to do a cap band. So I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail about that at the current moment. I need to start back up here again at the rightmost peg, and we're going to be doing a single chain all the way down the loom. And 
just continue to work straight down the loom. I would hum something, but I can't even hum in tune. So you just have to deal with the little bit of noise that I'm making while I lay them on the loom. Once again, a three time cat band in pink. One, two, three. Stretch it out over that peg. And now we need to hook up our horizontals. So we're going to start back up here at the top, taking blue, because blue is what we did with the horizontals on the first step. And we're just going to hook up with that row there and come straight across. Just very simple laying of your horizontal bands. If you've done the triple single, pretty much that's what we're doing again. So I'm just taking my single band and laying it right across. And I do not need to do the bottom row because they have the cat bands on them already. I'm going to start to loom up the project and reaching into that cat band where I have pink and looming straight forward. Now we have two horizontal bands here that we need to push back, grabbing that bottom pink and looming forward. All of these pegs here are going to have two horizontal bands on them. And we're just reaching in, pushing back those two, and grabbing that bottom pink. Push back my blue, grab my pink. Push back my blue, grab my pink. Push back my blues, grab my pink. Push back my blue, grab my pink. Okay, that's slightly annoying. You guys should get the hint by now. Pushing back your horizontal bands, grabbing your bottom color. Push back your horizontal bands, squeeze out, and get that bottom pink. But we're up here to the top and we need to do just one little slight adjustment. Here we have got our pink band that we used to cross over, coming across this way. I want you just to pick up that band, then take your hook, and slide your pink from this row down, and then place back that pink band that was your horizontal. And that's gonna keep everything nice and neat and in line right here. We're gonna start back at the bottom again, and we're going to loop straight forward. And just continue pushing back your, whoops, lost that one. Pushing back your blue horizontal. And you wanna grab the band that's on the bottom and just continue to loop forward. And I'm gonna stop up here. I don't wanna come across yet, although I could, but I just don't want to yet. I wanna finish up this last row. So back down here at the bottom, pushing back your cat band and looping forward. So you just want to continue pushing back your blue horizontal and looping forward. And when we get to the end, we're going to move the bands that we had across the top over. But for now, we're just looping straight forward. Nothing too difficult about this. Now I've reached my end. I'm going to go back into this first column over here on the left and I'm getting that band down there, the very last band that's going um, on the horizontal way. Grabbing it, loop it out a little bit and moving it over to the center. Reaching in through the center, grabbing that bottom band, pushing back everything else, and I'm moving that one over to the very right. Now we're ready to finish off our project, and you want to take a single band, run your hook through that open peg, and we're going to slip knot off this whole project by using that single band, pulling it up through and just slip knot it off. Now we are ready to take our project off the loom. And once you get the top pieces off, you can just kind of lightly tug on it. 
I hardly ever do this, but it's not very stretchy this time, until you get to the bottom, and then I just pop off my cat bands down here. And we're going to hide our dangle band. You wanna hide your tie off band. Give a little stretch and tug. And this is going to be our center portion of our chair. Here's a part that we have dangling over the back, which is going to be our cat bands at the end. And then we're going to attach it to the rest of our chair in another step or two. So just set this aside, hide your dangle band, hide your tie off band and set that aside and we'll get set up for the next step which we need to have our loom back in its straight configuration and we're going to have multiple steps that we need to do on this part also so get yourself set up your loom back to where it needs to be get your color band straight that we're going to be using for the side and we will be right back hey guys and welcome back our next step is going to be to do the small lower portion of the chair, this beam right here. We're going to be making both sides. It's going to be a simple chain of three bands that we're going to load on the loom. And we're going to do both sides at the same time. Then we're going to pull those off the loom and we're going to lay the bands for the main beam. And then we're going to add in this smaller beam right here. So, to begin, if you want to follow along quicker and easier, you want to gather up three bands, a total of three bands, and you want to make yourself nine piles of three bands, and you'll want to do this twice. So take a moment, if you'd like, hit the pause button and set yourself up nine piles of three bands, and you want to do two rows of those, two rows of the nine and three bands. All right, if you're back and you've hit your pause button, we're ready to begin. Like I said, it's going to be a simple chain, three bands coming down nine times. Three bands come down, three bands come down, and I'm just laying these three bands right down the loom in a straight line. And this is my ninth one. Let me just double check my count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now I need to cap off this band and I'm going to cap that off with a three time cap band. One, two, three. I'm going to stretch that across there. And then I'm just going to use this column over here and I'm just going to come down with three bands again. And I'm going to come down nine times for that. And the three bands really gives this chair the strength that it needs. And just continue down. And then on this peg here, once again, we need to do a three time cat band. One, two, three. Stretch that out over. Now we're just going to loom right up and secure it off. And you're just grabbing your three bands and you're doing a straightforward loop right up the loom. Nothing too difficult about this other than making sure that you grab your three bands. And then you want to secure off this end with a slip knotted band. And you're ready to take this side off the loom. I just want to tug and straighten those out a little bit. And you want to be sure that you hide your dangle band, your securing band. I call it a dangle band sometimes for those that follow along with my videos. So 
Sorry about that. I'm just hiding my little band there, tucking it up in underneath there. And now we can come over here and finish looming the other side, looping the other side. And I just pulled that completely off. Sorry about that, guys. Just going to replace that. Three time cat band. That's what I get for trying to work too fast today. Push back my cat band, hold on to it, and loop forward. And I only got two bands on that one, so I just need to reach in and get the third one. And I'm just going to secure this off again with a slip knotted band. And that's ready to come off the loom. Once again, you just want to take a second and hide your securing band just by looping it through a couple spots. Just give it a good little hide. There we go. We have those set aside. Our next step is going to be to load these up two rows again. We're going to work on these at the same time again. You want to load those up with three bands once again. And we're just going to do 12 all the way down the loom of three bands. So I'm just laying the three bands right down the loom. Oops, struggling with that one. There we go. And this is just three bands, once again, all the way down the loom. And it's difficult when you get down to the bottom. My hands get in the way a little more, I know. And we're going to cap that off with a, can you guess, can you guess, can you guess? A three time cap band. One, two, three. And lay that there. And then I'm going to come and lay on the right side, three bands all the way down the loom. Pretty simple here. And then we're going to add in our other pieces before we start to loom up. And still laying three bands. There we go. And we have to cap band this. And how many times, guys? How many times? One, two, three. A three time cap band. Sorry, I'm feeling a little spunky today. Way too much coffee this morning. And I just had a milkshake for lunch. So I'm kind of a little caffeinated at the current moment. Okay, so our next thing is going to be to take our small piece that we have here. And we're going to count down one, two, three, four, five links. This is link number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. Place your hook through that fifth link. So there's link number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. And we're going to set this on peg number peg number five coming up our loom from the bottom. So there's peg number one, two, three, four, and five. We're going to set that whole bit right over that peg there. And when we loop up this portion, 
it's going to link in this as a crossbar. Then we'll have to add this piece on in just a little while. So since we're working on both sides at the same time, we're going to take our other side and we're going to count five links. One, two, three, four, five. Spread that out and we're going to put it on the fifth peg up from the bottom, which is going to be in the same spot as the one on the other side. And now we're ready to loom our pieces up and then we're going to pull them off the loom and we're actually going to have two separate sides. So reach in and just loop forward. Reach in, loop forward, looping forward, looping forward. Okay. Now we've reached the congested spot where our cross beam is and you want to reach all the way through that, pushing back everything. And you only want to grab those three bands on the bottom. And you want to wiggle those out, give them a little wiggle and a tug, and loop forward. Now we're to the smooth sailing part again. And continue to loop forward. And we are going to slip knot off this end here just by pulling a band up through. Most of you guys know how to do a slip knot and tie something off now, so I'm not going to get into a lot of details with that. Now we need to finish our other side. And you just reach into your cat band and straight forward loop up. And loop up and reach in there, loop forward, and continue to loop forward. And then we want to stop right here, and we're going to do our securing band again or a dangle band, or tie-off band, whatever you guys want to call this today. There we go. Now we're ready to pull it off the loom. And you want to do one side at a time. And then we want to hide our dangle band, or tie-off band, at the top. I'm going to hide that in. Just give it a little weave inside. And it needs to be hidden a little bit more. So just hide that. And here we have one side of our chair. Just straighten up your bands a little bit. Try to get them as straight as possible. You don't want them real twisty looking. So it might take a little bit of fiddling just to get them straight. But that is going to be one side of our chair. Voila. We just need to do this little brace here that we're going to do without the loom. And now we need to have our other side, which is still on this loom. We're going to take that off. And we are going to hide our dangle band again. Just secure that tie off dangle band. Hide that up in your little post of your chair. And here we have our other side of our chair with some twisted bands again. I'm just running my hook through just to kind of straighten out some of these twisted bands. Give it a better look if you get it straight to begin with. And here is our second side of our chair. So we have two sides of our chair. And now the real fun begins. Now we can start to construct the chair, but we have to do this little piece here. That little piece is slightly important because it gives a little bit more stability to the chair.
and how we're going to do this is by hand today. So I want you to take one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to need seven gray bands per piece. Four, five, six, seven for my one side. And then I'm going to need seven for my other side. Six and seven for my other side. What we're going to do is to count down one, two, three, four, five links from the top. So here we have our chair looking like this. We're going to count down one, two, three, four, five links from the top. And you're going to pierce through that fifth one. And now comes the tricky part. So I've pierced through my fifth link from the top. I'm going to take a single band and I'm going to double twist it on my fingers and I'm going to pull it through that area that I just pierced and I'm reclaiming it on my hook. So you've basically made a link onto your hook within that area right there. We need to take another single band, double twist it on our fingers and pull that through and reclaim it on your hook. We need to do this six times because our seventh band is going to be our tie off band. So you're pretty much making just a small double twisted single chain. And reclaim, twist, and reclaim and this would be my number six twist and reclaim and now I'm ready to pierce through down here but before I pierce all the way through down there we're going to be piercing through the second link one two but before we go through that second link we need to remove one half of our chain we just reclaimed now pierce through that second link. There's link number one, there's link number two. Pierce through that link and then add your other end back onto your hook. Now we're able to pull through our single securing band and tie that off in a slip knot. And that secures everything together. That gives our back of the chair a little bit more support. And we just need to hide that extra little dangle band. And we need to do this all again on the other side. So if you didn't get it the first time, I'm going to be showing you how to do it again. And I'm just hiding my dangle band right now. And there is one side of our chair. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to count down five links, one, two, three, four, and five, and pierce right through that. Pierce right through that fifth link. Next, we're going to take a single band, wrap it around our fingers, and pull it through and reclaim. And we're gonna make a chain of a total of six Double twist, pull through, and reclaim. 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 And this is number six, double twist, pull that through, and reclaim. Now we need to count up two links from our bottom, number one and number two. But before I pierce through that link, I have to take off this one side. Slide that out, and then you want to count one, two links, and pierce through, and then reclaim the other side of your 
hook. Now we're ready to tie it off by pulling through a single band through all that congestion and we're going to just slip knot it off right there. We need to hide our little band. Lots of fiddling on this one. It's so cute when it's done but there is a lot of fiddling. Some of you guys aren't going to be too happy with me but it's very cute when it's done. Okay. So we've just gotten some of our loose bands hidden here, and I'm just straightening up that one there because it's bothering me. And here's my second side of my chair. There we go. Side one and side two. Our next step is to cover a single toothpick right here, and we're going to be covering it with bands. I think I had four on there. I might have had five. And it's going to depend upon your elasticity of the bands. I can't say that word. But just take your toothpick and you're just going to roll the band, twist the band onto your toothpick. There's number one. Just twist the band however many times until it gets tight onto your toothpick. There's two. And I'm just going to rotate my toothpick over. And I'm going to do two more on this other side. And as I said, it's just basic twisting. And there you go. And this is my fourth one. Just basic twisting and slide in further. Spread them out a little bit evenly. If you want to, you can add a fifth one. I am, I'm gonna add a fifth one just because I want it to look nice and full. I don't want any of the brown to show through. So I'm just gonna add a fifth band. Yeah, da, 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 da. And I'm just twisting the band onto the toothpick. Scoot that down over. There we go. And this is going to be our back brace on the back leg. And it's probably best if we go through where um, our connector piece is right here. So I'm going to pierce through that same spot. And there's one side on. And then I need to do the same thing on the other side. Piercing through that same spot. And here we've got our chair that is now standing. And we just need to add our um, little inside portion of our chair, cloth portion of our chair. And to do that, you're going to need your toothpick. For the front, it is the side where the cat bands were not, is the front. You just want to take your toothpick and you want to slide it right through that first set of links. You guys see that? I'm just sliding it right through this first set of links right here. And I'm sliding it all the way out through to the other side. And there is my first piece. And I'm going to take it and slide it through the second link. Here at the front and then on the other side I'm sliding it through the second link also. We just have the back portion to do, this back piece. And for the back piece I decided I didn't want to do the first link. You want to come through the second link here. Come through that second link, second set of links. And then you can kind of fold those down in the back. And you're going to go through the second link and the second link of your gray. And just fiddle with it a little bit to get it to where you want it to be. You could have actually covered up all the toothpicks with the gray. I just decided not to. Um, 
just because you can't really see them too much through. If I wanted to, I could flip this up. You can keep it up higher if you want. That way you don't see any of the toothpicks. But here we've pretty much constructed our beach chair. Tuck that down some because it raises up the bottom a little bit. Your beach chair is all set. You want to take a pair of clippers or scissors and you want to cut off the excess toothpick that you don't need. Just give that a little trim in all those areas with your scissors or your clippers. And here we have guys got, sorry about that I'm having a horrible time with my uh, camera today but we're just about done with the beach chair just wanted to show you that you can cut off your ends and hide those and paint them if you wish but our um, little Bob or beach Bob here fits perfectly in the chair he can relax and chill out if Bob is not already on my channel he will be very soon and don't forget about his wonderful wife, Beach Barbie, and Boogie Board Billy, and the Bathe and Beauty Brie in her little beach pail. So we've got the whole beach family, and I hope you guys have enjoyed. Post your creations on my Facebook at Crafty Ladybug dash Rainbow Loom Creations. Or tag me on Instagram at Crafty Ladybug and I can see your stuff. Thanks so much, guys. I hope you'll visit again soon.